Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. I'm getting ready to sharpen some saws. First thing I need to do is get the rust off. Some people call this patina. It's rust. It's surface rust on the surface of a saw. Drags. It makes it stick in the, in the kerf. You really don't want to have a rusty saw that you're trying to cut something with. So I'm going to clean that off. First thing I need to do before I clean the blade is I need to remove the tote. I want to loosen these screws up about a full turn. Then just tap them. That pops this side of them out of the tote. Now you have to be careful. When you're doing that, you want to make sure that this side is free of the wood. Sometimes these are buried down in the wood and if you smack them, they'll actually knock a chip out of the tote. Once you've got that other side popped free, then you can pull the bolts out. You only want to take them out part way before you push on them because if you go too far you'll be pushing on just one thread and that has a tendency to break off that first thread on the saw nut and saw nuts are not easy to get then I take a pin punch it's small enough to go down in and push on the inside of the, of the saw nut it actually goes inside the threads and doesn't push on the threads at all it pushes on the cap and I'm able to tap out the saw nut from the tote without damaging it. Now I have the tote off, that'll go and get cleaned up and, and taken care of on its own. Now the other thing I do is I put the saw nuts back on the bolts. Why am I doing that? Because they get separated. And if you lose them, they're hard to find. And while I'm working, I have them right here in a cup. I'm using a little tin can this time. The next step is to take the rust off. Now I've tried sanding blocks and they work all right, especially on the side where you might be seeing an etch. Because the sanding block doesn't go down into the etch and file it away. It only takes off the top the rust on the top of it. It doesn't get down into the letter. But this little saw is either old enough that it's lost all of its etch or else it never had much of an etch to start with. So I don't need to worry about saving the etch. If I had been worried about it I would have used a sanding block, sanded it down smooth until I got the, the etch showing and then gone on to this next step. Some people use a wire brush. Wire brushes are pretty a, aggressive. When you get over onto the teeth, they'll actually knock the edges right off the teeth and, and dull the saw to the point where you have to sharpen it a lot further. I found these little, this little 3M wheel. The first ones that I bought were 3M. Now they're no longer made by 3M. They're made by Mastercraft, uh, Sunho, all kinds of different companies, mostly Chinese. And 
There's orange and blue. The orange is more aggressive than the blue. The blue polishes, the orange actually takes the rust off. I was using Scotch-Brite and that works too. You'll see I'll use this green Scotch-Brite later. This orange bristle brush does a really good job of removing the rust without scratching the blade. This green wheel will polish it, but it doesn't do a really good job of getting down in and actually doing anything. Because this process kicks up a lot of dust, I rigged up this dust collector. It's a furnace filter taped onto the back end of a 20 inch fan. It does a great job of pulling the dust away from me so I'm not breathing it in. It's not all over the shop. Another nice thing about this orange wheel, it doesn't lose bristles. So it doesn't fling things up in my face. You still want to wear eye protection. I wear safety glasses. Now because I'm handling this sharp saw, it's not super sharp. It hasn't been sharpened, but it does have sharp edges. So I wear a pair of gloves. You've got to be really careful around an arbor when you're wearing a pair of gloves. You want to have the arbor turning this direction and have it going off the edge. You can see that the blade is cleaned up pretty well. This is the clean side. This is the side I haven't touched yet. Now we're, we're going to change out the wheel and put this wheel on. And I always want to unplug the arbor before I do that. Not that I'm likely to turn the arbor on but it just makes better sense. Make sure it's really tight. The other thing you want to do is let it run for just a second to make sure that everything's tightened up the way it should be.
Now that's shined up. There's still a little bit of rust in the bottom of the pits. Unless you're going to go down and take the pits completely out, you're always going to have a little bit of that left. The only way to fix that is to sand it completely out until the pits are gone. And of course, that's going to make it so that you have no blade left. A few pits, they're not going to hurt the effect of the blade. They're not going to be rough enough to cause a problem. This is nice and smooth. It'll run back and forth in the kerf as compared to this one. You can hear the difference just running my hand across the surface. A lot smoother. I'm going to set up and clean this side now, but you don't need to watch that. Same thing as before. Once the blade is all shined up, I put some wax on it. Once you've got all the rust off, it'll flash into surface rust pretty quickly. Now I use Minwax Paste Finishing Wax. I used to use Butcher's, but the can ran out, and I've still got a lot of this to go. I like the Butcher's a little bit better. Butcher's Amber Paste Wax. But, waste not, want not. And I have this, so I'm going to use it up. Make sure and get the edges of the blade too. Those rust just as much as the front and back. Now I'll set this over to dry off and we'll work on the tote. I'm working on a new venture. I found that nobody in this area wants to sharpen saws. So I'm going to be sharpening saws. I have arranged for a drop off point at Burgess Antiques down in Galesburg, Michigan. You can take your saw down there, fill out a tag, tell me what you want done to it, and then I'll come and pick up your saw, sharpen it for you, take it back down to Burgess and you can pick it up again. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know I read them all. Thanks for watching.